What's up guys, YGO Strats coming at you with more single card discussions where we talk about some of the cards that have impacted Yu-Gi-Oh throughout the years. Today's card, the staple of chaos, Blackluster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning. More than just a mouthful of a name, Blackluster Soldier's history is a long one. First released in the TCG in Invasion of Chaos in 2004, it's seen reprints in Gold Series 4 Pyramid Edition in 2011, Legendary Collection 3 Mega Pack in 2012, the 2013 Collectible Tins, and Premium Gold in 2014. As for its time on the ban list, VLS has pretty much been on there since day one. First limited in September 2003 due to its presence in the OCG, it was banned outright in September 2005, where it stayed for 12 formats until the September 2011 ban list, where it was put to one and has stayed ever since. A level 8 light attribute warrior effect monster with 3000 attack and 2500 defense, its effect reads, cannot be normal summoned or set. Must first be special summoned from your hand by banishing one light and one dark monster from your graveyard. Once per turn, you can activate one of these effects. Target one monster on the field. Banish that target face up. This card cannot attack the turn you activate this effect. Or, during the damage step, if this attacking card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, it can make a second attack in a row. Blackluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning is a force to be reckoned with, and one that some people even consider one of the most powerful monsters in the game. 3000 attack, a solid 2500 defense, and two great effects to either help push for an OTK or remove a problem card by banishing it, meaning no graveyard effects, all packed into one easy to summon card. When Invasion of Chaos was first released, it changed the game drastically. The light and dark attributes have always been the two strongest attributes in the game, as well as the two with the most support. This made building a deck around them as easy as it was natural, and in making a deck around the light and dark attributes, players were given access to all the powerful monsters that Invasion of Chaos introduced. Blackluster Soldier, alongside Chaos Emperor Dragon, and Chaos Sorcerer made controlling the field as easy as their summoning requirements. Any two monsters, one light and one dark, can summon any of these generic boss monsters, but what makes BLS different from the other two is that it has multiple effects. Chaos Emperor Dragon is incredibly powerful for nuking both hands and fields, which, while fantastic, can be played wrong and just forces a top deck to win situation. And Chaos Sorcerer is great for banishing face-up problem monsters, but it can't attack that turn, and it only has 2300 attack, which, while formidable at one time, is seen as more fragile in today's fast-paced and stronger metagame. Blacklister Soldier, however, is just as strong as Chaos Emperor Dragon with 3000 attack, can banish any monster regardless of its position, unlike Chaos Sorcerer, or could attack twice if provided to destroyed a monster by battle. This made Blackluster Soldier not only adaptable to different situations, but broken in those situations that it adapted to. And on top of being broken by itself, Blackluster Soldier is both a light attribute and a warrior type monster, meaning he receives all the support from light and warriors as well. When attacking with a BLS, you could drop an Honest to boost the damage you're doing and attacking twice, or even if need be, would retrieve a BLS from the graveyard thanks to a card like Warrior Returning Alive. And with its easy summoning requirements, you could probably summon it again right away. Way. All in all, Blackluster Soldier is one of the boss monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh that continues to be a force to reckon with across all metas, even if it's not used in the competitively viable deck. And it's one that earned its place on the limited slot in the advanced format. And so, that's our look at single card discussions, Blackluster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning. Stay tuned for our next video, and feel free to suggest some cards to review or deck profiles you'd like us to post. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on YGO Strats. In Japan, Gishiki are called Ritua, a play on the word ritual, obviously referring to the English term for ritual monsters, which the archetype is based upon. In the TCG, we call them Gishiki, which is a play on the Japanese term for ritual, Gishiki. This has been YGO Strats with your Yu-Gi-Oh! Fun Fact of the Day.